This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV and Association of MTK Global. Once again this week, I'm joined by Bob Arum. Uh, I know we spoke uh, in depth the other day, Bob, but the whole boxing world is actually talking about uh, Deontay Wilder's comments today. Have you seen them? No, I, I, yeah, I saw him like briefly. You know, he's making you know excuses for his performance against Fury. Uh, you know, I, I don't pay any attention to that. I don't think anybody should pay attention to that. He got beat, uh, you know, and maybe he can do better if he fights him again. But, uh, uh, you know, he had, yeah, he can attribute it to a bad night and so forth. But I think Fury exposed Wilder's weakness, and that is that if you get on top of him and you pressure him, uh, he can't then uh, retaliate with his one weapon, which is uh, his right hand knockout punch. I mean, if you're you're pressing him, and that's what Tyson uh, practiced uh, going into the fight, uh, then uh, you take away his right hand. And once you take Wilder's right hand away, he has nothing else other than the right hand. He's not a good boxer. He's not a good technician. He has the right hand. Take the right hand away, and you've uh, disarmed him. I mean, that's as simple as that. You can't say it simple. He had a, you know, it's like a guy who you're facing off with uh, who uh, has a gun. If you take away the gun, you can beat the hell out of him. Well, for fans who haven't seen the exact quote, I'll read it out now. Deontay Wilder went on record today and said, I don't see Fury as a champion. He ain't the champion yet. He knows that wasn't me. That wasn't the real Deontay Wilder. Something was wrong with Deontay that night. There's a time and a place, and I'll reveal a lot of things. Where do you think he's coming from, Bob? I don't know where he's coming from. A lot of it is, you know, he's a proud athlete, and he can't come to grips yet with really what happened in the fight was that his weapon, the right hand, got taken away. And uh, 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 it's as simple as that. Uh, Now, can he devise a strategy uh, where uh, uh, he's able uh, to uh, rearm himself with that fantastic right hand punch that he has? Um, I don't believe so. I think Fury has found the key to how you beat Deontay Wilder, and that's to press him and to throw a lot of punches at him and, in effect, to beat him up and disarm him. You take away the right hand, Deontay Wilder is just an ordinary fighter. Your man Tyson actually responded to those comments today. He said, keep letting yourself down, Deontay. It's sad. It was you I smashed. That's the truth. Just admit it and move on. It's just a fight you win, some you lose. That's boxing, pal. Do you think that's a fair response from your guy, Tyson? Yeah, I think that's a very intelligent response that Tyson made. Tyson's a very intelligent guy. He understands uh, uh, boxing. He understands uh, fighters. And his response to uh, Wilder is right on. Bob, let me also ask you about the talks you've had with the WWE? No, I, you know, it was unfortunate and unfortunate that that we signaled out the WWE because they have a facility in Orlando, but there are other places that we're looking at. The key to the whole thing is, and we're working very, very hard with various commissions and entities, you have to Number one, have testing. Once you have testing, then you have to figure out how you can get athletes into these into gyms that have been disinfected and are are are, are pristine uh, to uh, train. Because if the fighter can't train, he can't really fight. So that's what we're working on. We, we, we know what it will say. We have a beautiful uh, gym in Las Vegas. Uh, we're exploring now how you disinfect everything and you make it a pristine place. 
and you bring Titus into Las Vegas to train uh, uh, in a in a in a setting which is completely safe, uh, and then uh, you then have them uh, go to a place where you're going to do these fights without spectators, and you've got to make sure uh, that you have appropriate accommodations for them that is safe. But ultimately, it all comes back to testing. You see, with the UFC, uh, with, with mistake they made, was they didn't emphasize the testing, which was, you got, I mean, without the testing, you can't do any of it. You can't bring back American football. You can't bring back basketball. You can't bring back baseball. You've got to test the participants and the officials, the uh, the referees and the judges and the camera people. Now, once you get testing, then you've got to see how you can have facilities which are appropriate where they can train. And once you do that, then you're most of the way there. Now, the UFC was doing it too early when you had big problems with hospital beds. And, you, I mean, how can you justify bringing in uh, an athlete who was injured in a fight and having him take up a hospital bed where you might deprive somebody who a coronavirus patient from using the hospital bed and ambulances because ambulance were needed uh, to take uh, uh, coronavirus victims to hospital. Now, if you if you if, if you you're able to cut down on that so that there are hospital beds, that's not a problem, and the ambulance situation is resolved, and you can do testing. Hey, now you're in business. And now you can figure out a way to do these events without, initially without spectators and you're up and running. And well, then once you, once you get that done, then you have to figure out how you can open it up to spectators. And a lot of it, it would seem to me, go back, goes back to testing. Well, hopefully it goes back to testing. I mean, I mean New Jersey, you've got to watch what's happening. Because, I mean, you and I, we're not experts, medical experts, public health experts. But um, I was very uh, pleased to see in New Jersey, that in, in the United States, state of New Jersey, which had, uh, has had a tremendous uh, problem with coronavirus victims. They have one of the, the hot spots in the United States. They have apparently... Uh, uh, are using now uh, saliva testing. Now, if you can use saliva testing on a basis where you have the, the, the testing facilities there and you can test an infinite number of people, well, now you've made a real uh, progress in how you're going to do the testing. Because then, you know, if it's as simple as that, and I don't know, that you, you take somebody's saliva and they look at it and you can come back with a result 5, 10, 15 minutes, then you're, you're a long way there. But again, I'm not a medical expert or public. I'm reading all these reports like everybody else. But again, it's testing, testing, testing. Without testing, you can't open this up with or without spectators. Once you get testing, then the other things are relatively easy uh, to implement. Well, hopefully testing becomes available soon. As I said, Bob, we spoke in depth the other day. It was just a quick reaction on a couple of things. I'm sure we're going to catch up uh, soon next week, perhaps. Uh, but for now, just take care. Is there anything you'd like to add, Bob? Uh, you know, I'm just, again, I mean, everybody who loves the sport and boxing, and, and there are many people, many entities, many promoters. Uh, you have, you know, Frank and, uh, and uh, Eddie in the UK. Uh, we have uh, promoters other than Top Rank. 
And once we find these answers, then we can all get up uh, running. Uh, but we can't in a leap before there's assurance that what we need to get done is available. All the rhetoric and all the talk, everything has to take a back seat. We have to do this in an intelligent manner. I mean, that's, you know, again, now, you know, we, we have a situation in Japan where uh, Japan was going to open up and do boxing uh, by the end of uh, this month or the beginning of May. And then suddenly we realize, I mean, you read the reports, I don't know if they're true or not, that Japan is getting a tremendous number of new cases, coronavirus cases in Japan, which looks like it'll knock out Japan. Now it knocks out Japan, Japanese fighters in Japan will probably have a difficult time going to the United States or the United Kingdom. You know, all of these are really serious questions that none of us have dealt with before. Only time will tell, Bob. Um, but for now, I think you make That is correct. That is correct. We're all on the same page. We're all in the same boat. There's no controversy with Eddie or Frank or uh, with PBC. We're all in the same boat. We're looking for solutions to the problem. We don't want to go up and running like the UFC tried to do, which makes the situation worse. When we're ready to go, we want to know that our plan has a reasonable success of working. Just the last one, actually. Eddie spoke to us recently and said that he believes once boxing is back, whenever that is, it's going to really spike because everyone's going to be after you know live sport and uh, boxing fans are, are going to be more inclined to watch uh, every show and it's going to take a, a real spike. Do you believe that will be the case as well, Bob? Uh, absolutely. It is, right? There's, pen, there's clearly going to be pent-up demand. I mean, and there's, a, uh, there's a limit to how many series and movies no matter how good they are, that we can watch. <laughs> We're all looking for live sports, particularly live boxing. So Eddie is completely correct, but we have to do this in an intelligent manner. None of us have experience dealing with this situation because I've never seen anything like it in my lifetime, which is far longer than Eddie's lifetime. Very true. Okay, Bob Aram, thank you very much for your time. And I'm sure, as I said, okay. we'll catch up next week. Thank you, Bob. Okay, good talking to you. Thank you.